Hello and welcome back to our course on Adobe PSC 11. In this section we're going to look at choosing colors. Now I've mentioned a few times already on the course this pair of squares down here. Currently we have a blue square and a black square and they represent the foreground and background colors that are currently set. Now that doesn't mean to say that everything in the foreground is blue and everything in the background is black but in various situations where we use foreground or background these are the colors that will be used. For instance if I was going to draw something onto this image by default the color with many of the tools I might use would be this foreground color which is currently set at that blue. If I wanted to delete a part of this image and see what shows through the background is set currently at black which is a very common background. Now to the right of this pair of squares there's a little double headed arrow and if I click on that I can easily switch the foreground and background colors. If I want to set a new foreground or background color then I can do it in a number of ways and one of the ways is to use a tool called the eyedropper tool. So the eyedropper tool is over here just above the T for text there. Click that tool and there are a couple of options. The first one, the color picker, the first section, gives me options of point sample, 3x3 three three or 5x5. Five now the principle of the eyedropper tool is that we click somewhere on an image and use the point that we click on, the actual pixel, as the new color. Now I can instead of choosing the actual pixel I can tell PSC 11 to take a sample and the sample can be over a 3x3 three three square of pixels or a 5x5 five five square of pixels. I'm going to stick with the point sample at the moment and I'm going to take a sample just off of this sheep's head. I'm going to choose one of these sort of very dark grey bits on its head. So I click there once, I've taken the sample and that becomes the new foreground colour. Now if when I did that I held down the ALT key and clicked elsewhere, that becomes the new background colour. And in fact, if you have trouble remembering those sort of keystroke things, you can always switch, set the foreground color just by clicking with the eyedropper and then switch back again if you actually want to set the background color. Now there are a couple of things to note here. One of them is that there's another smaller pair of squares down here and this represents a control. If you click on it, it will reset to the default white foreground and black background and again you can switch between those two as well. And just to emphasize the point I made just now let me take an elliptical selection here say do edit cut you can see showing through the background color. Now let me change the background color I'm going to click the eyedropper tool hold the alt key down click on the grass that makes a new background color. Now what I'm going to do is to do another elliptical marquee tool, another one of those, edit, cut and it's the new background color that now shows through on the image. Now in terms of picking colors there are a couple of other useful tools that you can use. One of them is the color swatches panel. Now while we've been working on the colors with the sheep we've sampled a color, we've set it as a background color, we've currently got it set down here as a foreground color. What if we wanted to save that color, perhaps to use in another image or maybe we've selected a color for something else to paint or draw something on an image and we want to keep it. Well we can keep colors in the color swatches panel. Click on window, click on color swatches and the color swatches panel comes up. Now it's a regular panel so you can drag it out of here and work on its own. It has a number of color swatches. Got a scroll bar here where we can look through them and one of the options is to use a current color, for instance the current foreground color and add it to the swatches. So if I hover over the first available space there 
tooltip says click to create a new color swatch click on that give it a name I'm going to call it sheep grass to remind me where it came from click on OK and I now have a new color swatch sample of the color is saved in there and if I hover over it the name comes up as well now if I wanted to use that in another picture I could select it and use it either set it as the foreground color or use it in some other way using another tool in that picture so that's the use of the color swatches panel as you build up color swatches you may want to delete them straightforward hover over a color right click and you have a menu system that includes the ability to delete a swatch rename a swatch or in fact create a new one the other all important tool when you're doing anything with color in PSC 11 is the Adobe color picker we've already seen this once or twice I want to spend a little bit more time on it now if I say wanted to change the foreground color and I didn't want to use the eyedropper tool if I just click on the foreground color what I see is the color picker note that the caption up here says color picker foreground color there's a rectangle here in the top half I've got a new color bottom half I've got the old color currently I haven't selected a new color so both halves look the same so it looks like one block of color I then have a sort of spectrum here and if I click somewhere in there what I see in the big square is the range of colors within that range on the spectrum now I can just click somewhere in that square and choose that as my new color so I could go like that watch the new one appearing at the top let's go down to these more green types of color maybe down towards the orangey sorts of colors there and so on as an alternative I can enter a color code either using the red green blue system the RGB system or using the HSB system the hue saturation brightness system but whichever way I go about choosing my new color click on OK that becomes my new foreground color so they are the main tools that we need for choosing color let me just emphasize what the significance of the foreground color is let's choose this brush tool here for example this is a straightforward paintbrush we'll be doing some painting later it's currently set at quite a big size let me do a bit of painting on this picture look at the color it's that color now the opacity is only 50 percent so it's not a solid line of color if I made it a hundred percent and drew again I'd get a solid line of color so that's the significance of the foreground color you've already seen the significance of a background color so they are the main color picking options in the next section we're going to look at color and tonal correction so please join me for that Thank <laughs> you.